What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 37 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. We're back once more and it's the start of season four. Wow, that was a rhyme that I didn't intend. Uh, today we are going to be starting off our Champions League qualifying campaign and we're going to be taking on Atlantis. Yes, the lost city has been found. It was in Lithuania all along. Um, they're a good team. I really expect us to beat them, though. If we if we somehow don't win this, I'll be shocked. Um, they're valued at £109,000 if we just compare that to our club. We're now valued at £33.96 million. I feel like at the end of last year, it was around £9 million. I'm going to assure you now, I've not done any mad transfer signing. In fact, uh, I think we only have one signing so far this summer. Now, it is the 7th of July. The actual league season doesn't start for a little while. Uh, but the one signing we've made is Mike Ambler, a player who's gone straight into the under-20s. Uh, just a very good centre-back prospect. I like the look of this guy. Signed from Rotherham. Uh, he was on loan, you can see, at Bromley, which is kind of how he came onto my radar. He was in the National League kind of media best 11. He didn't have the best season last year at Bromley in terms of overall performance, but I feel like for £500,000, we've got a, well, a very good defensive centre-back. Now, he's not the best with the ball at his feet, 7 passing, 5 technique, 7 first touch, but there's still room for him to improve, and he has only just turned 19 as well. I talked about it last episode, but in case you didn't watch last episode, it was about an hour long. It was definitely um, one of those videos that won't be for everyone, but it was kind of all going through the squad, the squad building the ideas. Um, with the series, I am upping the player signing age to under well, an under 21s. Uh, this guy was actually signed when he was 18, but he turned 19, you know, during the period before he actually joined us at the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, with the save, we are going to be up in the age range. And additionally, I'm going to be signing three foreign players which I've not really started yet but I feel like the best way to do it is pretty much going to be to look at national teams you know go to the African leagues I doubt we can realistically sign a player from Egypt of course we are playing with a tribute masking on but um I feel like in terms of finding the foreign players it might be a case of just you know looking at the national teams paying a little bit extra here to scout these players and seeing what gets thrown up. We'll scout these two Egyptian players as a starting point. Uh, with the foreign signings, they can be any age, but to be honest, I feel like it would be nice to prioritise players under the age of 21 unless some goat comes out of nowhere. Uh, obviously not literally a goat, a greatest of all time kind of player comes out of nowhere who somehow hasn't been picked up. Obviously the chances of that happening are very unlikely. Um, but yeah, that is something that we do need to press on with. You can see in terms of signings, I was looking at Peacock Farrell just because I was curious about him as much as anything. I kind of forgot about the age limit, to be honest. I know some people have talked about the fact I should be able to sign any player from Northern Ireland. Um, this guy is going to go to Brighton. 100%. There's no point in even going in for him, and he's over the age limit anyway. We have got a few other players who are joining us in the future. Alex Roberts is joining us in January of next year, so about five months' time. He looks like a very solid centre-back, the Welshman. In fact, really well-rounded, 17 years old. Like the look of him a lot. We have Armitage, who's actually joining us from Nottingham Forest next month on his 18th birthday. Unambitious, but... There's something that I like about this guy. He's got some potential. Our scouts rate him a little bit, and we were able to get him, you can see here, uh, for £5,500, which is an absolute bargain. Two other players, two Welshmen. Uh, the first is this guy, Ryan Marshall, plays for Wrexham's youth team. Very good potential, allegedly. Capped at under-19 level, that was how we found him. And I like the look of him a lot. Obviously, 20 determination is standout. And the last player we have, John Morgan, was just thrown up by my scouts. Um, he's a bit of a punt, to be honest. He's not joining until the end of the year, but he looks very solid. Just the overall of, kind of overview of him looked very, very promising. Um, I didn't fully scout him when I agreed to sign him, so I didn't know he was going to be super inconsistent. But given his age, room to develop, room to improve. It's going to be interesting to see you know, how he gets on as the year goes on. Besides that, we did do some transfer business on the outs. The first player, Keindra Simmons, you might notice... He hasn't gone for the largest sum of money of the various bids we had last episode. I was an idiot. I forgot to cancel the Brentford one that was of less money. So he's gone out. A few other players have left. Uh, Danny Hill was just kicking up a fuss about lack of first team football. Not got the craziest potential. We let him go to Dundee for peanuts. Nathan Baxter, you guys knew about last time out. Perhaps the biggest sale of all, Jim Wood. Yes, he is buggered off, finally. I was trying to find a nice 
non-sweary way to say how I felt about the fact he's left. But yes, half a million pound for him is absolutely mad money, and that includes a 50% of any future sale clause. So if he does turn out to be some kind of amazing player, we're still going to get a bit more money for him. He's not a bad player, but he's not in the kind of running, I guess, to be our starting centre attacking mid this year. And so with that in mind, just let him go. In terms of Europe this year, you'll notice we have like an actual squad of players to pick from, which was something that we didn't have last year because of the, you know, the various rules. So that's nice for us. But you'll see here, some player condition and such is not quite that great yet. I do need to save my best 11, or at least what I think is my best 11, um for season four i do this every single year um but we are going to have to make some changes today for this first game of the year because players just haven't quite recovered so in terms of what we're going to do we're going to take off dixon and we're also going to take off lil and we're going to bring in justin wright and pestridge the crew duo um the other players here i feel like 88 percent condition is passable and 86 probably is as well jim meister oh it's a little bit low for my liking um I'll tell you what, we're going to bring in Simon Carlisle. Bit of a big moment for this guy, uh, but hopefully he can live up to the billing. Over the summer as well, just a few little bits of note. Paul O'Connor picked up his first international cap. Absolutely fantastic stuff for him. Hopefully that will be the first of many. And additionally, a surprise inclusion, Andrew Morrison picked up an international cap. Now, if you were to ask me which of my centre-backs would be the one making his debut for Northern Ireland first, I would have said McCoy, but, um, well, he missed out. Morrison got the nod. And, uh, well, he made a decent impression on his debut, which is great to see. Hopefully, uh, those guys, alongside Kieran Kane, the first of many uh, Northern Ireland young talents who are going to be playing here at Larne, who are going to make their mark on the international stage. But anyway, let's get into today's game. Of course, um, we've got two games. I do have a friendly in between, so I'm just going to cut out the period in between. As I kind of alluded to, we go into this game. I do very much expect us to win this comfortably, but... We can't afford to be complacent. If we do win this game, I think it's Hadjuk Split, who we have in the... Is it Hadjuk Split? I can't, I can't remember the exact name of the team. The Croatian team. Um, they have very good players. They would be the team we play in the second round. The board this year expect us to get to the third qualifying round of the Champions League. So they have laid out the gauntlet. And well, it starts here and now against Atlantis. I realise it's Atlantis, but Atlantis just... It's better. It, the Lost City. Anyway, hopefully we can just win this comfortably. You know, it'd be good to start the season with a bang. Obviously, if you missed last episode, do go check it out. Because it was an hour long. We went through the whole team. We moulded our starting 11 and our under-20s into actual squads as opposed to just collections of players. And, um, well, as you saw by the lack of transfer business, largely, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Obviously, we have the three foreign players that we can bring in. Um, those Egyptian guys you saw me scouting, literally the first players I've scouted. I feel like that will be the approach, though, to go to the national teams and see who's around. I actually don't think the Egyptian guys will want to join us. We might need to look at slightly smaller nations, but... Well, we'll see what we can do over the summer. I'm sure that'll be the ongoing kind of trend as we go through this European qualifying campaign. I mean, he could be sent off for a professional foul after 17 minutes. He has been. I mean, Atlantis now, they're a man down. We've been on top in this game. I mean, it's an interesting tactic from them. Pestridge picks up an injury. Oh, my gosh. That's not what we want to see. What we want to see. I guess Dixon's going to come in on 73% condition. He is not coming in on 73% condition. Janiel Bennett, get on the pitch. But wow, with them a man down, you expect us now to really turn up the gas, apply the pressure. Turn up the gas makes it sound like I'm heating, uh, heating them up or something. What I mean is we're going to apply the gas. We're going to accelerate and make something happen. And well, the game play is all us 71 percent of possession but we need to make it count on the scoreboard or risk being counted upon he says with his heart in his mouth as they lump the ball forward right janiel bennett what can you do here goes out wide to robinson what can he do crosses it in deflects the frame who hits it i mean robinson's been given the assist it definitely isn't his but we'll take it. And key frame, first goal of the season for him. Of course, a relatively recent addition, the Northern Irish centre mid, signed from Crusaders last January. Had a, a relatively meaningful impact. And what he's made a, another bit of an impact here. That is a good goal for us. And hopefully, that is going to mark the floodgates opening. And well, we have another chance immediately. Bannon whips in O'Connor. 
I mean, the floodgates could well be opening. That is two goals in the space of one minute. Bannon with the assist. O'Connor, who we are putting big money down on and kind of betting on being our big striker this year. That's the kind of finish we want to see from him. Unmarked in the box. Did miss one earlier, I noticed, but he didn't miss on the second time of asking slightly later on into the game. And, well, 71% of possession. They're a man down. I expect us to get four or five, six or seven, maybe. I mean, ultimately, we just need to get through to the next round. Goal difference, you know, it'd be great to pad our stats, but um, we need to just focus on getting the job done and avoiding injuries if we can. And, well, we've got another chance here. Robinson whips it in back post. Justin Wright, now with a goal to his name. He got a few hat-tricks last year. I wonder if he can aim for another one today from out on the left-hand side. I mean, I don't want to say this is game over. If we now don't go through after this round, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. But we can't afford to be too complacent. We were three goals up last year, you may remember. We almost capitulated. Um, I told the players I wasn't happy, and they're not, they're, they're not happy with that. So I'm just going to try and motivate them all. Sam Robinson, the captain, seems confused and demotivated. Everyone else is delighted, though, so it's fine. Sorry, Sam. Um, but no, hopefully we can well bounce back in this game now and make uh, well, a second half to remember. If we could add a few more, it might give me even the opportunity to rotate the team for the second leg. Bannon whips it in. McCoy. It's another unmarked header. They are awful at defending set pieces, Atlantis. I guess when you play all your football underwater normally... Headers aren't the best. Okay, let's not go. Let's not do this, Jack. It's not Atlantis. It's Atlantis. I mean, if you are a Lithuanian viewer, please let me know. Are Atlantis the best Lithuanian club? I'm. I'm going to be honest. I'm not an expert on Lithuanian football. I've never heard of this team. They ha they have a badge in my badge pack, which I guess is something. But we are just putting them to the sword. It's been pretty re relentless so far. Robinson. I mean, if he scores, it's taken the mick a little bit. Unfortunately, the woodwork denies him. Four nil. An hour gone. We have uh, subs that we can make. And we're going to make one. The Glen Dining fan club are going to be delighted. We're going to bring on Glen Dining uh, for Bannon, who is... Well, he's booked. And we're also actually going to take off Key Frame, who scored, because he's also booked. I don't want any sendings off or suspensions for the second leg, if we can avoid it. So we'll make the changes there and see what we can do. Janiel Bennett with the ball whips it back post. Morrison's there. I mean, I can call him the Northern Ireland international now. Morrison, can't I? Or the Northern Irish International, not the Northern, well, I guess it is Northern Ireland as well. But we've got a few of those in our ranks. I'd love to get to a point where, you know, half the team is regulars in the national team first team. I feel like that's a little ambitious. But, well, hopefully we can strive for that and see how we get on. <laughs> I mean, it's the long-term goal. Uh, Short-term, it feels a little ambitious, perhaps. So far, so good, though, here. Just exactly what we wanted from the first leg. Um, if I was going to be overly critical on the players i'd like a few more and i'd also like to keep the clean sheet for the remainder of the game carlisle to right who hits it i mean we said he wants his hat trick from the left that is a thunderous effort by him there simon carlisle with the assist just in right i mean he, he he's right to be de uh, delighted with that that was one hell of a strike by him hit with some power carlisle just lays it off to him bang clean hit through the ball on his left peg and well the number 97 remember the name gets another one to add to his ongoing collection of Larn FC goals 75 minutes left we've done all our subs we're just kind of watching the rest of the game play out if we could get to six or seven I'd be I'd, I'd say it's game over I mean at five it feels like it should be game over away from home but well can we add a few more right Pulls it back to Carlisle, who got an assist earlier for Justin Wright. Now Justin Wright returns the favour. I mean, the kids, they're doing all right in this game. We can't get too carried away, but I'm going to enjoy it for what it is. Uh, and ultimately, it's just a very pleasing performance. Obviously, that professional foul early on kind of opened the floodgates just a little bit for us. But, well, we've made the most of the opportunities that have come our way. We've not really squandered too many opportunities. Zero clear-cut chances, three half chances... When you've had 35 shots, it's a little concern to have that fewer clearly crafted opportunities. But at the same time, we've been lethal in front of goal. And 6-0, I mean, if we somehow bottle it now, everything's gone very, very wrong, hasn't it? I mean, lots of reasons to be happy with that performance right there, I feel like. Going into the second game, Pesterage out for three to four weeks. It could be worse, I guess. Um, an opportunity maybe to rotate the team there. 
going into the, the second leg against Atlantis, which will be coming, obviously, in just a second. Anyway, guys, we're going to go forward a week. As I said, I might go and scout some national teams, just see if we can find some real talented players. Um, obviously, this is probably going to need to be a little bit of ongoing scouting on players to well, work out if they're actually good enough for our team. But if they're playing for the national team, they're probably a surefire bet. With those three foreign player limits, um, it's going to be interesting to see what we can do. I can't see us signing any Argentinian or Brazilian regens, but we'll have a hunt around. We'll see what nations uh, have players who might be of interest to us. And, well, uh, I will see you guys in a week where we may or may not have a few new faces. I feel like that might be a little bit soon. But, well, we'll go into the second leg and hopefully with a, a fully rotated team, I think now, be able to come out the other side with another convincing victory. Okay, folks, so we're back here for the second leg against Atlantis. Pretty much wrapped up, which is great to say. Um, since you were last here, I did start doing our international scouting, yes. Um, I went through a lot of teams and nations and put in a few bids on players as well. And I've quickly realised... I'm significantly overestimating the players that we can sign. Um, we actually have bids accepted on these Tunisian players who are Tunisian internationals. There's some pretty big teams interested in them. Um, they they don't want to talk to us. Um, similar story, I think, is going to be the case with these Costa Ricans. I've actually just put in a bid on Sergio Luna. Um, I'm continuing to scout these players, but at least just at a glance, this guy looks pretty solid at the age of 18. Um, with these players, I guess we're not really looking necessarily for a specific position, more just players with pure star potential, the kind of players that if they were British, we'd have no hope in hell of signing. Um, in terms of just other weird players, this guy playing in Morocco looks pretty good as a right back as well, could be interesting. And uh, there's one player from Botswana. Well, you can see here we've got a Namib Namib Namibian. <laughs> That's a difficult word to say for some reason. Who my scouts aren't the biggest fan of. But this guy, Mohamed Idris, they love. So, Mohamed, you're getting another scout. We're continuing to look into him uh, with these players. They are all just internationals who we have scouted out. You can see with this guy. Um, maybe has a load of potentially 16 years old. Botswana international we'll see we'll see i feel like with these players um they're probably going to end up being rubbish and i'm going to go back to the drawing board on them anyway going into today's game i said i wanted to rotate the starting 11 a bit and i think that is exactly what we're going to do so the easiest way to do this is just to rest our normal starting 11 press quick pick and it will just completely rotate the whole team uh except actually jared thompson because we still only have two goalkeepers in our team and cockbill is out injured again he was out injured actually at the end of last year came back suffered a hernia so uh well not available to start this season either which is not exactly ideal but we'll try and deal with it but yeah fully rotated team here interesting that they want to play matt walker as a striker not so keen on that myself um i'll tell you what We'll play O'Connor as a striker to help inflate his goal-scoring tally. You'll notice here Glatzel is not at the club currently. He's on trial at Crystal Palace. Um, obviously, Glatzel is a good player, but I don't feel like he's irreplaceable. So I've offered him on trial to Palace for a week. They came in and asked for it. We'll see what kind of money they may be willing to offer if he impresses on his trial. But, uh, well, that's something to consider, I guess, going forward into the future. Anyway, let's get into today's game. Lots of pressure on us. Not. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see how we get on. I'm not usually a sarcastic person. But apparently I've been watching too much Borat and learning the not jokes because uh, we have rotated the team here. It is an unusual team. I mean, you look through it here. Janelle Bennett plays. Dixon, I guess, didn't play last game. Um, there's a few players who do appear here who may be our first team players, but... Well, given the fact we won the first leg 6-0, there's no pressure on us here. Um, I can get a martini out, sit on the sideline and just enjoy this second half for what it is. I imagine they're going to probably park the bus um, and just try and keep things, I guess, pr uh, proud and well, not try and screw up. I doubt they're coming into this game, you know, with the Burton Albion approach of we're going to turn around the goal deficit. Uh, of course, that game last night, Man City v Burton... Didn't happen, unfortunately. I was I was hoping for the for the ten nil or the nine nil an extra time win, but it didn't quite materialise. Uh, I feel like here it's not going to finish six nil to them. It, it, something would go horribly, horribly wrong if that was the case. And while we're on the attack here, Sobo Whale deflected shot against the woodwork. Keeper holds on to it, but well, a decent initial effort. And well, we maybe have another chance here actually. Sobo Whale, nice win. Now with Janelle Bennett back out with Sobo. To Downey. Good to see Downey play, of course. Homegrown at Larn. Kind of the first of our true academy produce. 
Uh, that makes it that makes it sound like we're farming players. But what I mean by that is he's the first player who was actually in the intake here and wasn't a player we signed. So it's great to see him playing. And well, Janil Bennett, Pat Post, Dixon, you've got to hit the target there, son. You've got to hit the target. Clear-cut chance, really. In fact, it wasn't listed as a clear-cut chance. It was a clear-cut chance. I'm not letting him get away with that. He should be burying that. If they do score one, I won't panic. If they score two, someone sound the alarm because it could it could go wrong very quickly and maybe I've been too big-headed. I mean, they're through here. Lovely block. Who was, was that Downey? I think it was Downey. It was indeed. Right, Glenn Dining. His fan club are in the corner of the stadium. They're cheering his name. What a ball that is to Dixon. I mean, Dixon's let down Glenn Dining then, or Glenn Dinning, if you want to be correct about his pronunciation. But, um, oh, Dixon, you've got to bury that, son. You've got to find the back of the net. And, uh, well, we give them a free kick, which is a little bit annoying. 20 minutes gone. I mean, it took us more than 20 minutes to get the first goal last game, so still plenty of time for us to add to the scoreline. And, well, another chance for us. Oh, we've had a, a few opportunities. Now they've got a chance. Let's try and keep a clean sheet at home, please. Free header. The woodwork comes to the rescue. I mean, maybe it's a warning shot. Still don't see them scoring six. That was their first shot of the game. Um, off the woodwork, though. Denied. Bit of fortune, perhaps, for us. Can we deal with this here? They're kind of bringing the ball forward. It's a little bit intimidating. Can we deal with this? I mean, they have scored. As I said, not going to panic at one. If it gets to two, we can panic. Of course, this is our rotated 11. It is a weaker 11. That is, well, uh, not debatable, really. Of course, with O'Connor up top, you'd like to see him add a few more to his goal tally. It's another set piece for us. We made the most of these in the first leg. Jim Meister had a free header before. O'Connor bundled it over the line, but he's offside. Jim Meister's header off the crossbar bounced out, and I guess it was off the initial header. Yeah, it was. Interesting that the line's been drawn there. Not sure what that was all about. It looked offside. It probably was offside. Um, yeah, Atlantis. Look like they're going to go in at half-time 1-0. So I'm going to get shouty-shouty at the players. Maybe a little bit of complacency creeping in. Although, when you look at the stats, the number of shots we've had, the amount of possession, we have been by far and away the better team. It's just been one set-piece goal against the run of play, which has seen them take the lead. I'm going to shout at the players, demand more, as well as shout at them at half-time. We're very, very angry today. Obviously, this is not the performance we want to give the home fans. Can we make good here? We can. Glenn Dining, back post. His fan club go wild. Not known for his aerial prowess, is Mr Dining. But, um, well, he, he had a free header. He wasn't exactly challenged, was he? Dixon with the ball in. Free header. Bat post does very well, to be honest, to direct it goalwards. Because that is a long way for him to, well, redirect the header from the back post there and get it forward. I don't know. Now there's Subberwale. Tries to pass it back. Doesn't quite make it happen. Now with Bennett. Glenn Dining to Jim Meister. I mean, can the Jim Meister general do something? He gives it to Downey. Not the best ball by Downey, but, well, Dixon collects the spoils. Gives it to O'Donnell, who has a go. I mean, Dixon with his second assist of the game from the right wing. Of course, his first was a corner, but the finish itself by O'Donnell, I mean, the assist is irrelevant. The finish is what has made that hit the back of the net. First goal of the season for him. Obviously, good to see another slightly different goal scorer on the goal screen shots. And what a finish that is. Just absolutely plows that into the top corner. Lovely, lovely goal by O'Donnell. We will take that. Interesting, they've used all their subs at, at the 45th minute. I've noticed the AI making some weird sub timings in the most recent FM update. It's another one here. I mean, we've turned around the deficit. Now I'd like us to go in for the kill and get a few more. I was about to make a sub, but we'll, we'll let this chance play out just in case a player who I was about to take off scores. Jim Meister, surely not a shot from there. Sub away all the left back. Don't shoot from... I take it back. Have a go, my son. It's the woodwork. Right, changes. What do I want to do here? I'm going to bring in Matt Walker for... You know what? We'll bring him in for O'Connor because he was going to play as the advance forward. I'm also going to play Harley Johnson. I'm going to bring him in for Jim Meister. Uh, we'll hold on to our last sub, I think, for now. But, um, yeah, we'll give a bit of time to Johnson. He's the youngster who is tipped for great things at the club. He's listed as our hot prospect. Hasn't featured very regularly in the first team at all since he signed from Birmingham. But we'll give him half an hour here in the Champions League qualifiers just to see what he's made of. But, um, well, a good turnaround so far this half. Obviously not the overall result we were hoping for, but in terms of just having a stranglehold on this game, 
it's impossible to deny that we've been in complete control. We've had so much of possession, 25 shots to their two, 61% of the ball as well. It's going to be interesting to see what Walker can do here. As um, Well, his name's Walker. I just saw him glide across the top of our screen and slide. O'Donnell to Glenn Dining. O'Donnell, he's already scored one scream. It gives it to Neko Williams. Cuts inside, has a go off the woodwork. I mean, it would have been an incredible goal for the right back if that had found the back of the net. Unfortunately for us, it deflects out. Now they have a set piece, surely not. I mean, it was a very dramatic dive by Jared Thompson. I think he had it covered. I'm not a fan of the amount of bookings we've got in these last two games. I'll be honest, it's not ideal. We'll make our last sub here. I'm going to actually bring in Ryan Newell for Glen Dining. Um, Newell, a player who didn't feature a lot last year, hasn't featured a lot, well, in the last couple of years, really, since he joined the club, but we're going to give him time here. When he has performed, he's performed well. And I'll, I'll say now, he did put in the cross there, and it's Robert Downey, the 16 or 17-year-old, I think he's 17, but a lovely header on off the bench, Newell, ball of quality, Downey directs that header goalward sublimely into that corner. I don't think there was any chance of it being offside. You can see there he was miles on. 3-1. That is going to be all she wrote, I think. And we go marching on to the second knockout round of the Champions League. We need to go forward one more round to achieve the board's minimum expectation. But I believe it's Hadjuk we've got in the next round. Uh, the Croatian team. That is not an easy game. They have real talent. Um, but, well, we've, we've shown, obviously, last year against both Fenerbahce and Sporting Lisbon, we're capable of beating the bigger teams. With our 4 2 3 1. And well, we're going to hope that we can replicate those performances from last year, this year. Um, but well, this game is going to come to a close. 3 1, it looks like it's going to finish, unless they score with the last kick of the game, which they're not going to. That is all she wrote. 9 1 on aggregate. Ultimately, a very convincing performance. Good to rotate the team, give everyone a bit of game time. Boys, I am very happy with that performance out there. I and mean, yeah, we go marching on. Uh, you can see here, Walker made his debut. Of course, he's been a while out of the team. I think he might become a regular over the course of this year. We'll have to see how he gets on. Had that one long-term injury, but I do really like the look of him. Our bid for Luna has been accepted. Hmm. See, this could be the problem here. We've got players in Costa Rica who aren't interested in talking to us. So even if I want to sign foreign players... We might have an ongoing problem where it's just not possible. You can see here we've got Hadjuk split in the next round. It's on my birthday, the 21st of July. It's the best day of the year. Hopefully we can make it one to remember. That is only in a week's time. So I guess I'll be joining you guys for that next time out. A big game for us. I don't see us signing anyone in that time. Uh, although actually we have got a free transfer we're looking at, which is Peter Walsh. who He looks okay. I actually scouted him a little while ago when he was playing for Chelsea. He's part Northern Irish as well, so that's kind of nice. Um, so we'll have to see if he amounts to anything. He'd be a player for the under-20s, you know, more of a punt for the future. In terms of recent outs, you can just see here, Brandon Oddie's gone out on loan, Romario Vieira's gone out on loan, Ian Robson's gone out on loan as well to get some regular first-team football. Uh, a few of these slightly older players who have gone out on loan have the option to be bought by their club, so they may not even return, but we're getting them off the wage bill at the very least, which, well, if you look here, you can see... We're currently spending £44,000 on wages, or 45000 Our wage budget is 93000 and we have £7 million transfer budget. But I can't sign players from Costa Rica, so I don't know where that budget's going to end up being spent. Maybe we'll just get in a load of Botswana and regens. We'll have to see how things pan out, I guess. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all from me today. Good little performance to start the season. Very, very happy with that. Also great to see just so many players within our first team now with one appearance next to their name already. Hopefully that is something that we can keep going throughout this year with lots of rotation. And, uh, well, hopefully I will see you guys next time. It's going to be a lot more difficult than today's games. How do you split the opposition? And, uh, yeah, well, I will see you guys tomorrow.